And the Oscar goes to Marion Cotillard, La Vie en Rose. This is the first Academy Award in nomination for Marion Cotillard. Thank you so much, uh, Olivier. What you did to me, Maestro Olivier Dao, you rocked my life. <laughs> Winner is Cher in Moonstruck. something. <laughs> uh, when I was little, my mother said, I want you to be something. And, uh, and I guess this represents 23 or 24 years of my work, and I've never won anything before from my peers. Um, I'm really, really happy. And the Oscar goes to Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. Yeah! Yahoo! Matt Damon and Ben Affleck are childhood friends. They appeared together in Chasing Amy and Good Will Hunting, for which Damon received a Best Actor nomination. This is their first Academy Award. I just said to Matt, losing would suck and winning would be really scary, and it's really, really scary. Uh, um, you know, we're, we're, we're just really two young guys who ha uh, were fortunate enough to be involved with a lot of great people wh whom uh, it's coming upon us to, there's no way we're doing this in less than 20 seconds. And Warren Beatty for Rick. The winner is Warren Beatty for Rick. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, Mr. Keaton, I know that, uh, that public expressions like this can be embarrassing sometimes and that my chances of uh, speaking with you privately later are at the moment excellent. Uh, <laughs> I, I do want to tell you that you make every director that you work with look good and I think that what they're trying to tell me here tonight, thank God, is that I'm no exception. Uh, Mr. Nicholson, uh, I know that you're enjoying my being up here almost as much as I am in being here. Uh, I know I do one thing well, I get good people. And the winner is Robert Redford.
I was thinking, no, I wasn't thinking, I was just kind of blank. But you know how it is when somebody says to you a few, about a year before, they say, you know, if anybody had told you a year ago that you would have been dot, 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 well, I just didn't think I was going to see this. But I'm no less grateful, and I would like to express my debt for the directors that I worked with in the past, for what I've learned from them, consciously or unconsciously. I consider this woman the greatest actress in the English language. The winner is Geraldine Page in a trip to Bonnet. to say while Murray is here, thank you for the Mirror Repertory Company, so much for both members of the company. Well, thank uh, Horton Foote for all this. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad that the members of the Academy responded to Carrie Watts the way I did, evidently. That's because the way he wrote it. And I want to thank you for this for all of us in the company. John Hurd and Carlin, and Richard Bradford, and Rebecca, and uh, it was all through the beautiful eye of Fred Murphy, and the masterful direction, and his film debut as a director, Peter Masterson. But mainly it's Horton who's fault with all this, so I thank you all. And Felicia Rashad, A Raisin in the Sun. Uh, and the 2004 Tony goes to Felicia Rashad. With two NAACP Image Awards and a People's Choice Award to her credit, tonight Felicia Rashad takes home her first ever Tony win. Often I've wondered, what does it take for this to happen? And now I know it takes effort and grace, tremendous self-effort and amazing grace. And in my life that grace has taken numerous forms. The first was the family into which I was born parents who loved and wanted me, and a mother who fought fearlessly, courageously, consistently, so that her children, above all else, could realize their full potential as human beings. Teachers who wanted to be teachers. Art, all my life. Karen Olivo, West Side Story. Karen Olivo wins her first Tony Award for her spectacular performance as Anita in the revival of West Side Story. Sit down! Oh my God! 
I'm completely unprepared for this. Uh, I just, uh, I have to say, thank you, Arthur, for believing in me and giving me confidence when I never had confidence. Um, my husband, who's amazing, and um, I can't do anything without. Um, the amazing cast, Josefina Scaglione, you make it so easy to be Anita. And George Ackram, thank you. Thank you for carrying me around the stage night after night. Um, oh my God. Um, I, I just want to dedicate this to everyone who has a dream. And uh, a lot of people said I couldn't do this. And I think that if you stick with it and you surround yourself with people who love you, you can do anything. I'm sorry. Thank you. Jeter, Grand Hotel, Elizabeth. And the Tony Award goes to Michael Jeter. I don't know what to say except to everyone who's been any part of this project, my heart goes out to you. If you're the audience, you are my heart. And the only other thing I'd like to say tonight is, if you're out there somewhere tonight and you've got a problem with alcohol or drugs and you can't stop, you think life can't change and that dreams can't come true, then I stand here as living proof that you can stop. It changes a day at a time, and dreams come true. God bless you. The Emmy for Outstanding Animated Program goes to Over the Garden Wall. The Outstanding Animated Program team from Over the Garden Wall consists of Patrick McHale, Rob Sorcher, Curtis Lee Lash, Brian A. Miller, Jennifer Pelfrey, Pernell A. Hayes, Amalia Lavari, Thomas Herfick, Bert Young, Robert Alvarez, Larry Leichleiter, Eddie Houchin, and Ken Bruce. Can I, should I talk now? Oh, God. Uh, thanks, everybody. <laughs> My voice is cracking. Uh, I'll read some stuff off this piece of paper. Uh, thanks to the Academy, uh, Cartoon Network, my parents, um, uh, my wife, Juke, and, and my son, Sam, um, Nick Cross uh, for art directing the series, and it's it just gorgeous stuff that he did, and, and the background artists, and the designers, and the storyboard artists, uh, the Blasting Company, who did all the music. Ladies and gentlemen, Val Kilmer and Robbie Robertson. Say go to all First Nations. This is somewhat of a historic occasion tonight that uh, after some years of convincing, the Grammys are acknowledging for the first time Native American music. You know, the original roots music of this continent. And uh, we haven't got freedom for Leonard Peltier yet. Maybe he's not Mark Rich enough. Uh, but we are getting our first Grammy. And Val, for this we're grateful. Yes. And the nominees are... A tribute to Elders Black Lodge Singer. Cheyenne Nation, Joseph Firecrow. Veteran Songs, Lakota Thunder. Peacemaker's Journey, Joanne Shenandoah. Gathering of Powwow Nations, Nations of Powwow, Tom B. and Douglas Spotted Eagle producers. And the Grammy goes to. Gathering of Nations, Powwow, Tom B. and Douglas Spotted Eagle. My buddies.
Congratulations. Spot, congratulations. Whew. I don't believe this. This is a, a real blessing. And on behalf of all Native Americans, the musicians, and singers everywhere, we'd like to share this with all of you. But first and foremost, I'd like to give all the honor and all the glory to the greatest warrior, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd like to thank all the drum groups that appeared on this record, 16 of them in all. I'd also like to thank the Matthews family who produced this event every year in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And this is for them as well. Yeah, they should, I gotta say that uh, this award goes out to all the drum groups. We've worked with you for years. Uh, Linda, Shavithin, Shnani, Linda, Josh, Manda, Gonet, good night, thank you. The Emmy goes to Zendaya, Euphoria. <laughs> Thank you um, to the TV Academy, um, to all the other incredible women in this category. I, I admire you all so much. This is, um, whoa, this is pretty crazy. I don't really cry. Whoa. Okay, um, thank you HBO and A24 for all your support. Um, thank you to my family and my team who's all here. I'm really grateful to have all of you here. And the American Theater Wings Tony goes to Bill Irwin. Tony nominations for writing, directing, acting, and choreography. Bill Irwin wins his first Tony Award for his mesmerizing performance. Thank you so much. To be spoken of in a breath with my fellow nominees is honor enough for any actor, and to be voted this honor by people who know and love and make theater should be blessing enough for any man, but I have blessings beyond this. I have a family who loves and supports me and whom I love. I have representatives who love and support me and are very patient. I belong to a strong and a proud trained union, and my paychecks are signed every week by producers who are brave and strong and fearless and who bring us this Broadway season. And then I step on stage each night with three ferocious actors who are brave and generous and who can make the breath of life out of a cry of the heart. And with the help of our brilliant director, we speak every night, every night, the words of one of our greatest playwrights of this or any time. This is Broadway and we do this every night. I thank you so much. The Golden Globe goes to Andrew Day. Thank you so much, first of all, to God, to Christ, my faithful and true. With no shame, just thank you so much for bringing me to get me through mom, dad, D, Josh Jackson. To Lee Daniels, my great love, my first love, to SOP, Johan Hari, my acting coach, Dodger Smith, dialect coach, Tom Jones, Hulu, to all the people at the HFPA. Thank you so much for being so engaged in Billy's story, to Trevante, to Tyler, to Miss Lawrence, Devon, Natasha, Evan, Tone, Garrett, Rob, 
Blake, Adrian, Leslie, and to my great team, Jeffrey and Miriam. Miriam, you got me through, you're my ace. Josh, Felicia, Vanessa, Alexis, and to all the incredible nominees. I can't believe it. And the Emmy goes to Andre Brower. This is Andre Brower's second nomination in this category and his first win for Homicide, Life on the Street. This is, um, <laughs> hey, um, I gotta beat the music. Um, uh, thanks to God for bringing me here. Thanks to my mother and father, uh, Floyd and Sally in Chicago for uh, making it possible. Um, my lovely wife, Amy, my boys, Michael and Isaiah. Um, thanks to our two great captains, Tom Fontana and Barry Levinson. Thanks to the writers, Jim Yashimura is here tonight, a man I love and respect. Uh, our producers, our cast, our crew, past and present, uh, the ladies in the production office, you know. Um, and this is for all the people in Baltimore. This is a town that I love. We have finally made it. Thank you all. And the Emmy goes to Gordon Clapp. This is Gordon Clapp's second nomination and first Emmy win as Detective Greg Metaboy on NYPD Blue. Oh. Well, I, I can't top Cameron, but, uh, you know, somebody asked me what my favorite television moment was just before this, and uh, I think it just changed. I, I, I don't suppose I'll bring the country together quite the way Mark McGuire did with his home run, but this will look just darn nice over the fireplace. Um, I have to thank uh, God and Stephen Bochco, not necessarily in that order. I have an enormous debt to David Milch. Few people have debts to David Milch. He usually has debts to those people, but... Um, and uh, I, I would ask... Uh, Jimmy Smith to accept my thanks and love on behalf of the producers, directors, uh, cast and crew um, that make going to work like coming home. Um, my special love and thanks to Billy and Deb and to my family back in New England. Thank you. Jimmy Smith, NYPD Blue. And the winner is... Jimmy Smith! Oh boy. My lady who is homesick, sick with the flu, told me I should have shaved. Damn, I should have shaved. Uh, to be coming from you. I'm so blessed to be working with this man on a daily basis. He is. You all know that he is a super talent, but he is so generous in the truest sense of a word in terms of being an actor, and he is just uh, a great soul. I love you. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. But, um, careful what you wish for. I, I, I wound up with, with a good deal here. <laughs> Steven, thank you so much for bringing me back to the family, Stephen Bochco. You are an innovator in what you do. <laughs> to David Milch, who is the genius on a daily basis, I love you, man, I love you. <laughs> to KD and Jimmy Mack and Nikki T and Gordy, Justine, Sharon and Gail, thank you for opening your arms, thanks to the to the Hollywood Foreign Press for supporting my work, ups and downs. Thanks for the public for hanging in there. To Bill Clark for giving me this guy in a lot of ways. To Tinker Hoblet and Mike Robbins and Bob Doherty, thanks so much for your support. And all the many, many people that are involved and touched my life. God bless you. Thank you very much. Dean Stockwell. It was easy getting up here. <laughs> I want to thank the 
Hollywood Foreign Press, this is really an honor and I'm, I really value it. Thank you very much. And I have to thank the, uh, the two most important women in my life. My mother, who's given me everything. Thank you, Mom. And my dear wife, Joy, who's giving me everything. And we all should thank her because of her work in the environment. Yeah, yeah Joy. Um, I have to thank a great crew on Quantum Leap, the boys and girls. They are fantastic. And the production staff, all the writers, the producers, Harker Wade, the producer, uh, writer, actress, woman of the year, Deborah Pratt, uh, Carrie McCluggage from Universal and the support we're getting there, with Michael Watkins, our DP. Uh, but I must say, since on this show I'm a hologram, there's only one actor I work with. I worked with a lot of people and enjoyed doing it, but this guy is the best. Scott Bakula. Scott Bakula. Thank you. And to the creator of the show who's created this and crazy part I'm doing. Thank you very much, Don. The main man, Don Belisario. Thank you. And the winner is Scott Bakula, Quantum Leap. I guess it's good if the camera's in there when they introduce you. Um, thank you, members of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. Everybody at Universal, uh, the old and the new. Everybody at NBC, the old and the new. Uh, I'd like to uh, accept this on behalf of the 187 or so people who, dreamers and schemers and crazy people who think that every eight days you can make a period film. And we're still doing it. My daughter today in the car said, you know, you're going to the Emmys tonight. And I said, no, it's the Golden Globes. And she said, I don't understand. You always get enamiated, <laughs> but you never win. And she said, but if you do, I'll go crazy. So Chelsea, you go crazy. And to my wife, Krista, who not only has supported me, but as I've been locked in time for three and a half years, has moved her life forward and mine with it. And I thank you for that. Don Belisario, for the greatest role you could ever imagine to have. Thank you all. And the BAFTA goes to Paul Merton for Have I Got News For You? Well done, Paul. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I was first uh, nominated for this uh, some ten years ago. Um, I prepared a speech at the time full of topical references about uh, George Bush attacking Iraq. Obviously, that doesn't work anymore. Um, apparently, the closer you sit to the stage, the more chance you've got of winning. Angus is in row G at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane. <laughs> quickly thank everybody that works on the program. It's been a tremendous show to be doing for 14 years um, and I think Ian Hislop would be the first person to agree with me when I say I really deserve it. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Robin Williams in Goodwill Hunting. And the Oscar goes to Robin Williams in Goodwill Hunting. Robin Williams has previously been nominated three times. This is his first Academy Award. Thank you. Oh, man. This might be the one time I'm speechless. Oh, uh, thank you so much for this incredible honor. Thank you for putting me in a category with these four extraordinary men. Thank you, Ben and Matt. I still want to see some ID. Thank you, Gus Van Zandt, for being so subtle you're almost subliminal. I want to thank the cast and crew, especially the people of South Boston. You're a can of corn, you're the best. I, uh, I want to thank Marsha 
for being the woman who lights my soul on fire every morning. God bless you. And most of all, I want to I wanna thank my father up there, the man who, uh, when I said I wanted to be an actor, he said, wonderful, just have a backup profession like welding. <laughs> thank you. God bless you. And the Oscar goes to... Roberto! This is Italy's 26th nomination and its 10th Academy Award. Sofia, I live here at the Oscar, but I want you. I want to be rocked by the waves of your beauty. Come here. Thank you, thank you. This is a moment of joy, and I want to kiss everybody because you are the image of the joy. And uh, he who kisses the joy as it flies lives in eternity sunrise, they said the poet. And this is wonderful to be here. Wonderful. I feel like now really to, to, to dive in this ocean of, uh, of, of uh, generosity. This is too much. <laughs> Your generosity is... Uh, and uh, how do you say when the ray... The... the the hailstorm, it's a hailstorm of, of, of kindness, of, of gratitude for you. And uh, really, I would like to thank everybody did the movie because uh, I, we can, without them, I couldn't fly with this movie. Everybody who did, the, the producer, the screenwriter, Cerami, Elda Ferry, and Gianluigi Braschi, Nicola Piovani, Vittorio Cecchigori, Harvey Weiss, Steve Miramax people, thank you very much for what you did. And also, I would like to thank uh, my parents uh, in Vergaio, in the little village in Italy. <laughs> they gave me the biggest gift of poverty, and I want to thank them for the rest of my life. <laughs> really, but thank you, Mama and Babo. Thank you. And thank you for your love. Because it's a, if I am here, it's because people love the movie. So it's always a question of love. I would like to dedicate this prize to those, because the subject of my movie, those who are not here, they gave their life uh, in order we can say life is beautiful. And I would like to also say a kiss to Giorgio Cantarini. Ciao Giorgio, the little boy. And because we are talking the love, uh, uh, Dante said, L'amor che muove il sole, le altre stelle, love who move the sun and the other star. So, uh, love is a divinity, and sometimes if you have a faith, like all the divinities, it can appear. That's why I want to dedicate this prize to Nicoletta Braschi. Thank you. And the Oscar goes to Roberto Benigni in Life is Beautiful. Roberto Benigni is the first actor to win an Oscar for a performance in a foreign language film since Sophia Loren won for two women almost 40 years ago. This is a terrible mistake because I used up all my English. <laughs> no, I don't know. 
Oh, this is a, oh, what is that? How can I, I, I'm not able to express all my gratitude because uh, now is uh, my body is in tumult because it's a colossal moment of uh, of joy so uh, everything is really in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that i cannot express i would like to be a, a, a jupiter and kidnap everybody and lie down in the firmament making love with everybody because i don't know how to express it's a question of love you are really, this is a mountain of snow, so delicate, the suavity and the kindness. And it's something I cannot forget from the bottom of my heart. And thank you for the Academy Awards, for the, who really loved the movie. Thank you to all the, uh, in Italy for the Italian cinema. Grazie all'Italia who made me, I am really, the, I, have, I, I owe to them all my, if I did something good. So, grazie all'Italia. E grazie all'America, I learned a lot of things here. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope really I don't deserve this, but uh, I hope to win some other Oscars. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And the Emmy goes to Don Rickles. Mr. Watts, the Don Rickles Project. Mr. Warmth, the Don Rickles Project won an Emmy, and now Don Rickles wins. It's a mistake. I, I am just stunned by this. I, I've been in the business 55 years, and the biggest award I got was an ashtray from the Friars in New York. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I appreciate the people that helped me put this whole thing together. First off, my son Larry Rickles, he came to me and said, Dad, I have an idea. Let's tell a little bit about your life. God bless him. He made it happen. Uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful. Uh, 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 Mike Richardson, who came up with a money truck and said, here's four dollars, Jew, try to make it work. <laughs> and then, of course, John Landis, who I met doing a picture for some 45 years ago called Kelly's Heroes, a picture which I carried Clint Eastwood. And uh, I told that to Clinton with his big booming personality. He said, no, no, no kidding. Anyway, uh, what can he do to me? Put me in a movie? I'll spit up on him. I can't. I can't. Anyway, but, uh, and also, uh, my, my dear wife, Barbara, she is something else. She was a, uh, an assistant at GAC when I first met her, and I said, I'd like to see, I'd like to see an agent called Jack Gelati, and she said, what is it in regard to? I said, I'm a butcher. I have a truck outside. I want to sell meat. And she said, being a wise guy will not get you in to see him. And today, she just sits in Malibu on the sand with the jewelry signaling ships. <laughs> but from my heart to the Academy, to you wonderful Emmy people, and to wonderful people in the same category, David Letterman, I know, will commit suicide. Uh, <laughs> no, David's a great man and a friend. But I thank you all. God bless you, and thank you for making my life very happy at a long, heavy trail. And to my mother, Edda. Edda, darling, I love you, and I'm listening for you. And the Emmy goes to Barry Sonnenfeld, pushing Daisy's pilot. <laughs> This is the first Emmy win for Barry Sonnenfeld. Um, I have written something down because I've been known to speak scatologically. Um, surround yourself with people who are smarter than you, and you'll make a great show and get all the credit. Um, I'd like to thank producers Dan Jinks and Bruce Cohen, who sent me the brilliantly written script. 
by Brian Fuller, Peter Roth, and Steve McPherson, who championed our show. We had a fantastic crew and a uh, wonderfully talented cast. I'd also like to thank my daughter, Chloe, and my beautiful wife. Sweetie, it is shocking that Sweetie has married the neurotic man that stands before you. And all that I am, or ever hope to be, I owe to her. Love TV and fear the internet. Thank you. And the 1999 Tony for Best Featured Actress in a Musical goes to Kristen Chenoweth. Very good man, Charlie This is Miss Chenoweth's first Tony Award. my clothes so fast in my life. I have two families to thank. B.D. Wong, Ilana Levine, Roger Bart, Stanley Wayne Mathis, and Anthony Rapp. I love you guys like brothers and sisters. Michael Mayer, I work for you anytime. Andrew Lippa for writing me a great song. All the producers that believed in our show. Clark Gesner, Sh Charles Schultz, Jay Bender, my agents at Richard Bauman and Associates. Mom and Dad, he drove me to many, many hours of ballet and dance classes. I hope you feel it's worth it now. <laughs> my brother, you sat through all those recitals. You're the man for doing that. My fiance, Mark, I love you. Thanks for holding my hand through all of this. My mentor, Florence Birdwell from Oklahoma City University for teaching me how to sing. Thanks to the voters. Love you guys. And the Emmy goes to... Kristen Chenoweth. Kristen Daisy. Was raised in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and says if she were not on TV, she would have become a private detective, which itself sounds like a pretty good TV show. This is the first Emmy win and second consecutive nomination for Kristen Chenoweth. I'm totally surprised. This is very heavy. And that was Amy Poehler's idea, the glasses and everything. Um, I'd like to thank my parents. I'd like to thank Ryan Fuller for trusting me to create this part. I don't know why. Um, I'm out unemployed now, so I'd like to be on Mad Men. And on I also like The Office and 24. <laughs> I'm shocked. I can't believe it. Um, Brian, um, the producers, um, Dan and Bruce, the whole cast, Ellen, Susie, Lee, Anna, Chai, I love you guys. <laughs> to my manager, Danielle Thomas, who said that I could go into TV for Broadway. <laughs> Thank you. And Neil Patrick Harris, you rock. This is really heavy. <laughs> Please wrap it up. I'm wrapping it up. Thank you so much to the Academy for recognizing a show that's no longer on the air. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye. And the Grammy goes to, you've seen her seconds ago, Hilary Hahn, but that's a peck of Solomon and the Schoenberg, Sibelius Violet. <laughs> I won a Grammy before, but I got it in the mail because I was performing in Germany and um, couldn't make it. So I was just happy to be here today. And um, this is fantastic for me because I feel so strongly about the works that I recorded on this particular album. And everything came together beautifully. I, I loved working with Esopeka Salonen and the Swedish Radio Orchestra, so I'd like to thank them. Um, Deutsche Grammophon, my... Um, managers, everyone who helped make it happen, and then of course everyone who voted, um, and thank you for being here today. Thank you everyone, so exciting, thank you. And the Spirit Award for Best First Feature goes to, sorry to bother you, Riley. 
Sorry to Bother You was inspired by director Boots Riley's own experiences working as a telemarketer. 20 years ago, Riley attended film school and then took a detour into music. Riley finished the script for Sorry to Bother You in 2012 and then made an album of the same name with his band, The Coup. Bring my bodyguard up here <laughs> with me. It's a uh, buffet table. <laughs> um, I think that there's been a lot said about the new diverse voices that are happening in film, but we can't take away from the fact that that's happening because there are real movements happening out there on the streets, direct action, where people are trying to change the way the world is. And rightly so, film is responding to that. And, and even more so, I think it's a chance for people to make films that have to do with things that we thought we had to edit out before. We're keep, I mean, this is a film that takes place in an office place and is the first one that I know that has class struggle in it. Even though class struggle is happening every day when you're on your jobs and you're seeing that happen. For some reason, we have thought we had to edit that out of our stories. And the Spirit Award goes to... Ryan Coogler from Best To the Bay Area for supporting us during this during this film, and, and, and just to bring it, you know, to bring it to bring it back to bring it back home for us and, and, and for and for everybody here, especially those of you who work on true stories. Um, this film was about a real guy, Oscar Grant. Uh, he was born on February 27th, 1986. So his birthday was actually a few a few days ago. He would have been he would have been 28 a couple days ago. And his, his his girlfriend and his daughter were supposed to come down to the Spirit Awards, but because it was a five year anniversary of his death. Uh, they, they couldn't do it because they were doing a memorial today. And I talked to her on the phone, and they were making chicken tacos because that was his favorite thing to eat. And uh, they were going to, 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 the, to the church where he was baptized, and everybody was getting together and having a good time. So that's what they're doing right now. Uh, so I wanted to get him a special shout out. And I talked to her, and I, and, and I asked her if she wanted me to say anything. And she said, just tell them about the people besides me who are going through the same thing. Because so many people, there's thousands of Oscar Grants every year, people losing their lives to gun violence. And she said, share a story about somebody that's like, that's like me. So I know a lot of you guys heard about you know, Trayvon Martin and you guys, some of you guys might be heard about Jordan Davis. Um, and, and, and whenever we would travel with this film, we would go to different cities and I'll meet people that say, hey, it was an Oscar Grant here in this neighborhood, it was an Oscar Grant here in this neighborhood. And they would say, are you gonna make a movie about this person? Are you gonna make a movie about that person? And I have to tell them that I'm that making this film, you know, it killed me, you know, waking up every day and going into the editing room or going to the set or going to do my research and seeing a guy that looked just like me, who's the same age as me and from where I was from getting gunned down. But, but one story really touched me that happened over the past year. Um, and, that's, and that's a story, that's a story of Jonathan Farrell. Any of you guys ever heard about Jonathan Farrell? Well, Jonathan Farrell was a 24-year-old, 24-year-old guy who was, who was from Florida, but he was in North Carolina. He gave his friend a ride home uh, late at night, was coming back, coming back to his house for giving his friend a ride at 2.30 in the morning, and fell asleep at the wheel, and his car crashed and went off the road. The, the wreck was so bad that he had to kick his way out of the car by kicking out the back window. He was a former football player, so he was a pretty strong dude. 
and I'm, and I'm sure his phone was either destroyed or, 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 or it was dead because the first thing he did was climb up that hill and go to the first house that he could find to get some help. He was bleeding, obviously, you know, knocked on the door ferociously. And the woman that came to the door answered the door thinking it was her husband and saw this, saw this guy, this big, this big guy who had just been in a car accident and freaked out, slammed the door in his face and got on the phone and called 911. Jonathan was outside asking for help, you know, ho hoping that she would call the ambulance or something like that. But she called the police because she was scared. She didn't know Jonathan and she said, told the police that I have a kid in here, I don't want him to get my baby, you know what I mean? Please send somebody over. The police arrived and Jonathan ran to them with his hands up because he figured that they were there to help him. And before they said anything to him, one officer tased him and another officer shot him 10 times in the chest. And Jonathan Farrell died. This was in October of this past year. And, and, and I can't help but to think, whenever I hear stories like this, I can't help but to think that if Jonathan Farrell looked like Matthew McConaughey, he wouldn't have been shot. He would, have, he would, still, be, he would still be alive today. For some reason, every time I see a, a, a story or, or, or an incident about law enforcement gunning down somebody who doesn't have a gun, for some reason, they always look like me. Or they, or they look like Michael. Or they look like Gerard. Or they look like Ephraim. Or they look like Keith Stanfield. And I'm trying to figure out why. And I'm so thankful, so thankful to God that I had the ability to, to work in a, in a medium where I can ask those questions. I can work in a medium where, where, I can, where I can share these stories. And I'm so thankful to the American independent film system so thankful to the critics that see the film and, and put the word out, and so thankful to the process and to all you filmmakers that motivate me to help, to, help us to continue to tell our stories because there's so many stories that need to be told. Thank you guys so much. And the Oscar goes to Jamie Lee Curtis! <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis made her big screen debut in the horror classic Halloween. 45 years later, she was an executive producer on the final installment, Halloween Ends. I have 45 seconds and I promised Janet Yang I wouldn't do it well because I'm a good girl. <laughs> I know it looks like I'm standing up here by myself, but I am not. I am hundreds of people. I'm hundreds of people. I am the, where are the Daniels? Daniels, Jonathan, Leyline, the entire crew, my bae Michelle, Key, Steph, the entire art group of artists who made this movie. We just won an Oscar. And my mother and my father were both nominated for Oscars in different categories. I just won an Oscar. And the Oscar goes to... Lee Kwan made his big screen debut in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom and played Data in The Goonies. He holds a film degree from the USC School of Cinematic Arts and has worked as a stunt coordinator and assistant director. Thank you. Uh, my mom is 84 years old, and she's at home watching. Mom, I just want an Oscar. <laughs> my
my journey started on a boat. I spent a year in a refugee camp. And somehow, I ended up here on Hollywood's biggest stage. They say stories like this only happen in the movies. I cannot believe it's happening to me. This, this is the American dream. I owe everything to the love of my life. My wife, Echo, who... who month after month, year after year for 20 years, told me that one day, one day, my time will come. Dreams are something you have to believe in. I almost gave up on mine. To all of you out there, please keep your dreams alive. Thank you, thank you so much for welcoming me back. I love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the Oscar goes to Michelle Yeoh. All I want. As a child, Michelle Yeoh studied to become a ballet dancer, and despite her illustrious career in action films, has no formal training in martial arts. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> For all the little boys and girls who look like me watching tonight, <laughs> this is a beacon of hope and possibilities. This is proof that dreams dream big and dreams do come true. And ladies, don't let anybody tell you you are ever past your prime. <laughs> Never give up. I wouldn't be standing here tonight without the Daniels, without A24, without my amazing cast and crew, without everyone who was involved with everything everywhere all at once. But oh, I have to dedicate this to my mom, all the moms in the world, because they are really the superheroes. And without them, none of us will be here tonight. Oh, she's 84, and I'm taking this home to her. She's watching right now in Malaysia, KL, with my family and friends. I love you guys. I'm bringing this home to you and also to my extended family in Hong Kong, where I started my career. Thank you for letting me stand on your shoulders, giving me a leg up so that I can be here today. And to my godchildren, to my sisters, um, all of them, to my brothers, to, oh God, to my family. Thank you, thank you. Uh -oh. The winners are Ryuichi Sakamoto, David Byrne, and Kong Su for The Last Emperor. And the Oscar goes to Joel Hynek, Nicholas Brooks, Sir Robertson, Kevin Mack for What Dreams May Come.
Joel Hynek previously received a scientific and engineering award and was nominated for his work on Predator. This is the first Oscar for Nicholas Brooks, Stuart Robertson, and Kevin Mack. And the Oscar goes to Billy Bob Thornton for Slim Ray. <laughs> Whoa. And the Oscar goes to Ethan and Joel Cohen for Fargo. And uh, the Oscar goes to... Um... You better give me that. Yeah. And the Oscar goes to Hans Zimmer for The Lion King. Winner is Cher in Moonstruck. something. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Stevens, I know this will mean much more to the winner if you open it, won't you please? I can hardly believe that, but I'll, <laughs> I I'll think be pleased so. to do it. And the winner is Bob Fosse for Cabaret. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I must say, I, I feel a little like uh, Clint Eastwood, uh, that you're letting me stand up here because uh, Coppola or Mankiewicz hasn't shown up yet. But. And the winner is... Isaac Hayes, theme from Shaq. The Oscar goes to Ann Dudley for the full Monty. <laughs> Ann Dudley 
has written scores for over 15 films, including The Crying Game and Say Anything. This is her first Academy Award. Well, thank you very much. Oscar goes to... Excuse me. Glenn Hansard and Arquette Glova for falling slowly for months. This is the first Academy Award and nomination for Glenn Hansard and Marketa Iblova. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. And the Oscar goes to Tan Doon. This is the first Academy Award and second nomination for Tan Dunn. He's also nominated for original song tonight for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Thank you. Lila Kedrova and Gorba the Green. I don't know what I have to say. The winner is... Miyoshi Umiki. And the Oscar goes to Angelina Jolie. This is the first Academy Award nomination for Angelina Jolie. Nobody's ever fainted up here. And the winners are Ryan Bingham and T-Bone Burnett for the Weary Crime from Crazy Heart. This is the first Academy Award and nomination for Ryan Bingham. And this is the first Oscar and second nomination for T-Bone Burnett.
Thank you so much. Federico Fellini for Amacord. Standard Kubrick for Barry Lyndon. Sidney Lamette for Dog Day Afternoon. Robert Altman for Nashville. Milos Forman for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. The winner is Milos Forman. First, I thank the Academy for the company of the nominees they did put me in. I'm very proud of that. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's Dio. Il Postino. Eh, il Postino. Il po you did good. <laughs> Best picture. May I have the envelope, please? Thank you. The winner is In the Heat of the Night, Walter Mills. Thank you, and thank you, members of the Academy. From its very inception, in the heat of the night, has been a labor of love for all those of us who've been part of it. And I want to express my deep gratitude to all of the talented artists who contributed to it. The winner is... Hang S. Noor in the same This unbelievable, but so is my entire life. I wish to thank all members of Motion Picture Academy for this great honor. And the winner is Linda Hunt.
Oh, this is extraordinary. Um, there was an Indonesian phrase in the film which translates into English as water from the moon. And it means that which is unattainable, the impossible, that which one can never have or know. Making the year of living dangerously for me was water from the moon. Watching tonight, here's the sign. And the Oscar goes to, and the Oscar goes to Guillermo Navarro for Pan's This is the first Academy Award and nomination for Guillermo Navarro, a cinematographer on over 25 films, including Spy Kids and Night at the Museum. Thank you. Thank you so much to the Academy. This is a great honor. I want to congratulate my fellow nominees. It's a great honor to be among you. And the Oscar goes to Christopher Rouse for The Bourne Ultimatum. This is the first Academy Award and second nomination for Christopher Rouse. Uh, 48 years ago, um, my father was privileged enough to receive an Oscar, and I'm, uh, I'm deeply, deeply honored that you've put me in his company tonight. And the Oscar goes to Carly Simon for Let the River Run from Working Girl. Come on up here, Carly. Thank you. This is, this is really for you, Mike. You, you are the guardian angel tonight. Thank you so much. And the Oscar goes to... Sorry. Good afternoon. Uh, I thank I thank you. I'm so happy. This is my fourth nomination, and I don't know what to say other than I'm so delighted. And the Oscar goes to Howard Berger and Tammy Lane for the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, The Witch, and The Warrior. This is the first Oscar and nomination for Howard Berger and Tammy Lane. Well, I'm just glad that uh, Clooney doesn't do makeup, so i am uh, worked out well. And the winner is... Thank you very much. I'm very excited, very happy, very moved, very everything tonight. And 
The winner is a rock. <laughs> <laughs> the winner is Shirley MacLaine. because this show has been as long as my career. <laughs> and the winner is... <laughs> too much. God bless you. The official story. Accepting the award for the official story, the film's director, Luis Quinzo. As I stand here, accepting this honor, I cannot forget that on another March 24, 10 years ago, like this day, we suffered the last military coup in my country. We will never forget this nightmare but we are start, starting now to begin with our news dreams. Thank you. And the winner is... Thank you, sir. I'm going to fight Tatum on you. The winners are Nino Rota and Carmine Coppola. <laughs> I wish that Nina Rota were here. I'm sure he would have been as happy as I am and even happier. We worked very nicely together. He's a splendid musician, a wonderful friend, a good gentleman. I want to thank my son, Francis Ford Coppola, for being up here, because without him, I wouldn't be here. However, if, if I wasn't here, he wouldn't be here either, right? <laughs> Winner is? The winner is Francis Ford Coppola for the Grand Avatar 2. <clears throat> I almost won this a couple of years ago for the first half of the same picture. That's not why we did the Godfather Part Two, however. Uh, it was Charlie Bluthorn's idea, and when I heard it, I said at first, my God, to do a sequel to The Godfather is a surefire way to fail and blow everything I was lucky enough to get up to that point. And then I went home and I thought about it, and I realized that because it maybe was such an easy way to fail, which was probably the best reason to try to tackle what seems so impossible, and uh, it's, uh, I'm really happy I did. Oh my gosh, and the Oscar goes to... Sofia Coppola for Lost in Translation.
This is Sofia Coppola's first Academy Award. This win makes her family the second three-generation Oscar-winning family. The first was the Houstons, Walter, John, and Angelica. Thank you. I, I, I can't believe I'm standing here. Thank you. Thank you to the Academy for giving me this honor. Thank you to my dad for everything he taught me. Thank you to my brother Roman and all my friends who were there for me when I was stuck at 12 pages and encouraged me to keep writing. The winner is Walter Houston. Bob said you can't take any credits. I'd like to take a credit myself. Again? John Houston. If this were hollow and had a drink in it, I'd toast Henry Blanky. And the winner is Angelica Houston and Chrissy Bonner. I'd like to thank the members of the Academy for honoring my fellow nominees and myself. This means a lot to me since it comes from a role in which I was directed by my father. And I know it means a lot to him. And the winner for the best achievement in makeup is Chris Wallace and Stephen Dupois for The Fly. The Fly. And the Oscar goes to Ex Machina, Andrew Whitehurst, Paul Norris, Mark Arnington, and Sarah Bennett. This is the first Oscar and nomination for Andrew Whitehurst, Paul Norris, Mark Arnington, and Sarah Bennett. I'm really bad at predicting this, apparently. Um, this is so utterly unexpected. And the Oscar goes to Aiko Ishioka for Bram Stoker's Dracula. And the winner is Amy Vada for Run.
The Wolfman, Rick Baker and Dave Elsie. That's gross. <laughs> and the Oscar goes to... The Wolfman, Rick Baker and Dave Elsie. This is the seventh Academy Award and twelfth nomination for Rick Baker. The first Oscar and second nomination for Dave Elsie. Oh man, I'm smiling so big my face hurts. <laughs> it's like a... DDA, Lavernia, and Jan Archibald for La Vie en Rose. And the Oscar goes to... DDA, Lavernia, and Jan Archibald for La Vie en Rose. First Academy Award for Didier Lavergne and Jan Archibald. Thank you very much. <laughs> and the Oscar goes to. Bob Dylan, for things have changed from Wonder Boys. I even get to hold this. They asked me to, to have a, a speech prepared. And uh, this is the first time I've actually prepared a speech. I never did this before. Maybe I have to pre prepare speeches in the future. Anna Paquin, the One piano. Day when my mother and father were singing together in the forest, a great storm blew up out of nowhere. But so passionate was their singing that they did not notice, nor did they stop as the rain began to fall. For the best performance by an actress in a supporting role, the Oscar goes to... Anna Paquin, the piano. Tatum O'Neill. All I really want to thank is 
My director, Peter Bogdanovich, and my father. Thank you. All right, open that. Okay. Yeah, please, may I? You're going to make me open it? Yeah, you do it. The winner is Timothy Hutton. Yeah. Thank you all very much. Um, this is the first award, <laughs> and I'm very nervous. Of course, I Kim Basinger, an L.A. confident. Put blood on your shirt. Is that an integral part of your job? Yeah. Do you enjoy it? When they deserve it. Did they deserve it today? I'm not sure. But you did it anyway. Yeah. You're different, Officer White. You're the first man in five years who didn't tell me I look like Veronica Lake inside of a minute. And the Oscar goes to Kim Basinger, LA Confidential. This is the first Academy Award for Kim Basinger, who has acted in over 20 films. only get 30 seconds and um and to give a thousand thank yous uh, i just want to thank everybody i've ever met in my entire life um, and the oscar goes to michael kane in the side of This is Michael Caine's second Academy Award. He won an Oscar in 1986 for his supporting role in Hannah and Her Sisters. He was nominated for his lead performance in Alfie, Sleuth, and Educating Rita. I, I, I was looking, watching all the others and thinking back when I, I saw the performances and you, I was thinking of how the Academy changed the winner is to the Oscar goes to and if ever there was a, a category where the Oscar goes to someone without there being a winner, it's this one because I do not feel like being the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, in New York City, Miss Audrey Hepburn in Roman Holiday. I want to say thank you to everybody who in these past months and years have helped, guided, 
and given me so much. I'm truly, truly grateful and terribly happy. And the Oscar goes to Emma Thompson for Houghton. The Oscar for Best Screenplay Adaptation is awarded to Emma Thompson. <laughs> Sense and Sensibility. The winner is Art Carney in... Thank you, Glenda. Ladies and gentlemen, and members of the Academy, and what other words besides thank you? Manager, father, confessor, William Francis Xavier McCaffrey for 25 years, who said two words to me, do it. You are old. Hurry up before I have sinking spells here. George Burns in the Sunshine Rising. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. This is a, this is a beautiful moment for me. Um, you know, I've been I've been in show business all of my life, and I've loved every minute of it. And being honored tonight by getting this award proves one thing: that if you stay in the business long enough, <laughs> and if you can get to be old enough, you get to be new again. Oscar goes to Wallace and Gromit in The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, Nick Park and Steve Bach. This is the first Academy Award and nomination for Steve Box, the fifth nomination and fourth Oscar win for Nick Park. Oh, oh, oh this is amazing. Actually, we've got a little thing uh, yeah. just to uh, match the old bow ties for coordination. We just happen to bring them along, yeah, just yeah. in case. I just want to give a great big thank you to Helena Bonham Carter and, and particularly to Peter Salis, who has been the voice of Wallace. He's here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, uh, at the Oscars. He's, he's, he's been the voice of Wallace for the last 23 years and you've been an absolute gem, Peter, and you've sparkled all the way. We all made it together, guys. Crack and cheese, cheese grommet. Grommet. <laughs> M and B. I always wondered whose idea was it to put bugs in drag the very first time.
And did you have any negative connotations from whatever organization? Chuck Jones, well, at that time, which was before you guys were even born, it may be difficult for you to imagine a time when you weren't born. And I'm sure the public would agree that it's far better that you're here. But. M and B, depending on the day, Chuck. Chuck Jones, the thing was at that time, if a man dressed up like a woman, there was no transvestite. Nobody even knew the term. M and B, it was just funny. Chuck Jones, it was just funny. The man would put on a woman's hat, and they would think that was funny. They wouldn't think that the man was turning into something inappropriate. M and B, little did they know he really liked it. Chuck Jones, yeah, he did. We found that out as we went along. And the winner is... Nighty Night Bugs, John W. Burton. This is a terrific thrill for us at Warner Brothers Cartoons because it means Bugs Bunny has finally made the grade. He's tried for 18 years, rabbit's feet and all, finally made it. Uh, thank you. I want to uh, pay the lion's share of credit to Frizz Freeling, who directed the picture, to his immediate team, uh, Holly Pratt, Warren Foster, Artie Davis, Jerry Shinicky, Virgil Ross, and Tom O'Loughlin. I want to give my Appreciation and gratitude to Mel Blank, who's the voice of Bugs Bunny, as well as many other characters, and a marvelous trooper and a wonderful man, and also to Milt Franklin, our musical director and arranger, and about 75 other people that are very talented and capable at Warner Brothers cartoons that I don't know what we do without. And the winner, Irene? <sighs> David Niven. <laughs> I'm so loaded down with good luck charms, I could hardly make it up the steps. <laughs> well, people have been saying thank you for Oscars for 30 years, and I have nothing to add except thank you. And the winner is The Times of Harvey Milk, Robert Eastin, and Richard Sidney Producer. a simple thank you to Harvey Milk for reminding us that it's possible to live life with a sense of social responsibility and a sense of humor. I'd like to also thank Harvey Milk for his courage, for his pride in being gay, and for his hope that one day we will all live together in a world of mutual respect. And the Oscar goes to Dustin Lance Black for Milk. Oh my God, this was, um, this was not an easy film to make. When I was 13 years old, my beautiful mother and my father moved me from a conservative Mormon home in San Antonio, Texas to California, and I heard the story of Harvey Milk. And it gave me hope. It gave me the hope to live my life. It gave me the hope to one day I could live my life openly as who I am, and that maybe even I could fall in love and one day get married. I want to I wanna thank my mom, uh, who has always loved me for who I am, even when there was pressure not to. But most of all, 
If Harvey had not been taken from us 30 years ago, I think he'd want me to say to all of the gay and lesbian kids out there tonight who have been told that they are less than by their churches or by the government or by their families that you are beautiful, wonderful creatures of value. And that no matter what anyone tells you, God does love you. And that very soon, I promise you, you will have equal rights federally across this great nation of ours. Thank you. And the losers aren't. <laughs> Bill Condon for Gods and Monsters. the first Academy Award for Bill Condon, who also wrote Sister, Sister. Curtis Hansen won the Oscar last year for his adaptation of L.A. Confidential. Congratulations. Oh my God, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I see the 30 going. Uh, um, this Gods and Monsters is based on Chris Bram's novel, Father Frankenstein, and it's a very faithful adaptation, so first I have to thank him. Most of all, James Whale. Um, 60 years ago, um, Hollywood sort of turned its back on him because he insisted on uh, living the way he wanted to, so uh, Mr. Jimmy, this is for you. Thank you. And the winner is... Henry Mancini and Leslie Bricos for Victor Victoria. been a while. <laughs> Feels the same though. And the Oscar goes to, and the Oscar goes to Lizzie Gardner and Tim Chappell for the adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Well, what a surprise. Um, we'd like to thank, firstly, the costume designers who uh, nominated this in the first place, because that was definitely one of the best compliments we've ever had. And thank you to the Academy for voting for us. And the Oscar goes to... Pedro! What about my mother? This is Spain's 18th nomination and the second for director Pedro Almodovar, who was nominated in 1988 for his film Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown. My God. And the Oscar goes to <laughs> a fantastic woman. <laughs> Sebastian Lelio. This is the first Oscar and second nomination for Chile. Thank you so much. This is uh, an amazing gift. Thank you to the Academy. I want to thank the cast of the film, especially the brilliant actor Francisco Reyes and the inspiration for this movie. 
Daniela Vega. The Tony goes to Jay Harrison G. Thank you. My mother raised me to understand that my gifts that God gave me were not about me. To use them to be effective in the world, to help somebody else's journey. Um, so thank you for teaching me how to live, how to love, how to give. For every trans, non-binary, gender non-conforming human who ever was told you couldn't be, you couldn't be seen, this is for you. And the Tony goes to Alex Newell Sharp! I'm not gonna hold y'all, cause it's hot in here. I have wanted this my entire life. And I thank each and every one of you in this room right now. And mommy, I love you. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for loving me unconditionally. Thank you for teaching me what strength is to my entire building and cast and crew of Shucked. You are my rock, I love you all. Thank you for seeing me, Broadway. I should not be up here as a queer, non-binary, fat, black, little baby from Massachusetts. <laughs> and to anyone that thinks that they can't do it, I'm going to look you dead in your face that you can do anything you put your mind to. And the Oscar goes to Hilary Swain in Boys Don't Cry. This is Hilary Swain's first Oscar nomination. She lived as a boy for one month to prepare for the role of Tina Brandon, a true story of a boy, girl living as a boy in Nebraska. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have come a long way. Yes. To think that this movie wouldn't have been made three and a half years ago. And we made it now for under $2 million, and now this, it's quite remarkable. Um, I want to thank the Academy for their support and recognition of me and my work in a movie that is so important, and I am so proud to be a part of it. Um, this movie would have never been made. I had, I, I just on the off chance that I got up here, I brought this piece of paper because I knew I couldn't forget anyone because everyone put their heart and soul into this movie and God knows no one got paid. So um, first, um, Kimberly Pierce for her fierce tenacity and vision. Last but certainly not least, I want to thank Brandon Tina for 
being such an inspiration to us all. Uh, his legacy lives on through our movie to remind us to always be ourselves, to follow our hearts, to not conform. I pray for the day when we not only accept our differences, but we actually celebrate our diversity. Thank you very much. And the winner is Harvey Firestein. up too bad before but Cheetah Rivera warned me about the, if this happened the second I have a list of things I can't say so I better check it before it's all right Cheetah I'm not gonna say them it says do mention my mother who Alex put all the way in the back over there hi ma it says do mention my producers you saw them before plus Ellen Stewart who I talked about before I said oh, you're ringing I know you're ringing just a second do in, do mention my incredible cast who's all at Peter Atreus' house having a Tony party. Um, my designers, my wardrobe, my audience, the incredible audience that comes back time and time again. Plug La Caja Fold, don't plug Camille's nightclub act. Thank Cheetah, I love you all. And the winner is... Talk to Trilogy! <laughs> Everyone was so scared I was going to say something very embarrassing to you all. I mean, Mel Gussow prayed that I would win the Tony just so I could say something embarrassing. Um, I can't. Uh, we started in the basement of La Mama uh, with one-act plays. The Glines are the only theater in America that would put this show on. They, they mortgaged an oriental rug in their living room to do it. We opened for an eight-week limited engagement, could not give a ticket away for three weeks. Here we are tonight. Oh my God, it's ringing. Good night. Maya Taylor, Tangerine. Out here, it is all about our hustle, and that's it. He owes me money. I don't owe you money. Why does he owe you money? We made a business transaction. <laughs> and the Spirit Award for Best Supporting Female goes to... Maya Taylor. This is Maya Taylor's first film role, and this is the first major film award ever given to a transgender actress. First of all, no one tells you how nervous you're gonna be when you're up against like other big actors for an award. You know, there's so many things that go through your head. You know, am I gonna trip on this long ass dress getting up here? You know, am I gonna plant my face in the ground? There's so much. <laughs> so, I have had a long journey through my 2015 because I had come from almost nothing and then got this role in this movie, and my life has just did a total 360. I'm so out of breath, I feel fat. But um, <laughs> um, I met this wonderful director and writer, Sean Baker, 
and Chris Bagash. Sean Baker and Chris Bagash said, we're gonna film this movie on iPhones. Yeah. The first thing I thought is, this movie ain't gonna be shit. <laughs> but it turned out to be amazing. And you know, I started meeting this amazing team with Darren and Shiting, our producers, Mark and Jay Dupla. Um, you know, I'm Marcus and Carrie Cox, my co-stars, Katana Kiki Rodriguez, James Ransom, Mickey O'Hagan, and the worst one of them all, my manager, Alan Mendel, which I love. I love him, I love him, I love him. He gets on my nerves, but I love him. I love him. Yeah. Um, Joanne Wiles, um, Magnolia, who did our distribution. I love you, Ariane Rocky. She makes my life so much easier. <laughs> My mother and my partner, James, I love you. You're my everything. And most of all, thank God, you know? So what I want to leave with you guys today is there is transgender talent. There's very beautiful transgender talent. So you better get out there and put it in your next movie. Thank you guys so much. I love you all.